Today we're going to be talking about writing equations from word problems and what form of the linear equation is going to be best for us to use in order to get to solve what we're being asked for. So our first example, okay, it says when you are given a rate of change or the slope and a starting point or the y-intercept, the easiest thing is, well, obviously if you're given the slope and the y-intercept, use the slope-intercept equation. y is equal to mx plus b. So let's dive in to this word problem a little bit and see exactly what we're being asked to do. Angie's school is doing a run-a-thon fundraiser. Her aunt has pledged to donate $20 plus a quarter for each lap that Angie runs. Write and solve an equation to find out how many laps Angie would need to run to make $50. Okay, well, the first thing we want to do, we know we're using y is equal to mx plus b form. Okay, so why don't we solve? First thing we do is let's figure out what our slope is or our rate of change, and then let's calculate what our y-intercept or our starting point is. Okay, so it might be easier for us to identify our starting point. Okay, so the starting point is what we are beginning with. So if we read this, Angie School is doing a runathon. Her aunt has pledged to donate $20 plus a quarter for each lap. So our starting point is going to be this $20. Okay, so our starting point is $20. Okay, our slope is the per, a quarter for each lap. So that's our per. So our slope is a quarter or 25 cents. Okay, now, so it's 25 cents a lap. So we know that it's 25 cents times something. So let's label our variables. So we have our x and our y. So our x is the number of laps that she's going to walk run. And our y is the total amount of money that she wants to or is going to earn. Okay? So now let's write and solve our equation. Okay, so we only can solve for one variable right now, so let's see what we're being asked to solve for. Write and solve an equation to find out how many laps. Laps is what we're being asked to solve for. Laps. Okay, so we're going to be asked to solve for x, so what's our y going to be? Obviously our y is here. That y is right here. That's $50. Okay, so let's write our equation. So our y is 50. So 50 is equal to 0.25x plus 20. Okay, first thing we're going to do is we're going to subtract 20 from each side. we're going to be left with 30 is equal to 0.25x. And since that's multiplication, we know the inverse of that is division. So we're going to divide by 0.25. So we know that she is going to have to run 120 is equal to x. So she has to run 120 laps. Okay, and that answers our question. How many laps did she have to run? Okay, so let's look at another one using the same strategies. Okay, <clears throat> we want to, so let's read to see if, if we're using the right formula or form. To rent a bike at the beach, it costs $30 plus 750 per hour. If you are renting the bike from 2 to 530, write and solve an equation to find the total cost. Okay, 
So we know we're going to use the y is equal to mx plus b form. So we need to find out what x is, what y is, what m is, and what b is. Okay, so the first thing is, let's look for our y-intercept. Where is our starting point? So here we know it costs $30 plus $7.50 an hour. So our y-intercept is going to be $30. Okay, now let's find our slope. Our slope is our per hour, is our per unit. So that's $7.50. $7.50. So let's label our X's. So it's per hour. So X would be hours. So Y would be total cost. Okay. So, but do we, can we now add some more information under X? Well, how many hours are we renting the bike? Well, we're renting it from 2 to 5.30. So that would be three and a half hours. So let's put that in there. So now we actually know. So we have four different variables in our equation. We know three. We can solve for the fourth one. So let's write this out. So y, which is what we're solving for, right? Because we want to know the total cost, okay? And x tells us that we are where our time. Okay, so y is equal to, what's our slope? $7.50 times 3.5 hours plus the original $30. Does everybody agree? Okay, so my first step would be, let's do the multiplication. y is equal to? So that would be 750 times 3.5. So that gives us 26.5. 25, my fault. Plus 30. Now I'm just going to add that up. Y is equal to $56.25. So it cost her $56.25 to rent the bike, or us, whoever's renting the bike. Okay? Pretty easy. All right, so let's look at our next form. So here, if we're given two separate categories, okay, so that would be more of our standard form. So we have apples and bananas, or quarters and dimes, or nickels and pennies. So we have an A and a B. So we're going to use the standard. Obviously, AX plus BY is equal to C. Okay, so let's do one of these examples. Okay, so what we're going to have to label is which one's going to go with what? What is A? What is B? Okay. So Thomas has a bunch of quarters and nickels in his pocket, totaling $8.75. If Thomas has 28 quarters, write and solve an equation to find out how many nickels he has. Okay. So we can call A will be quarters, and B will be nickels. Okay, so now we know AX plus BY, so the X and the Y are going to be the values of each. So X is going to be 0.25, and Y is going to be 0 0.05, okay? And then C is going to be our total. All right, so let's go in and find what we're looking for. All right, so he has a bunch of quarters and nickels that total... 875. So that's our final. That's our total. 875. Okay. He has 
28 quarters. Okay, and we don't know how many nickels. So that's what we're being asked to solve for. How many nickels? Okay. So let's write our equation. This one will be in standard form. AX plus BY is equal to C. So A is quarters. How many quarters does he have? 28 times, what's the value of a quarter? 25 cents plus B, do we know how many nickels he has? We do not, times, what's the value of a nickel? Five cents is equal to $8.75. Okay, so simplify this at $7 plus 0 0.05B is equal to 875. Subtract 7 from each side. And we'll get 0 0.05B is equal to $1.75 and we divide by a nickel, okay? So we know that it's going to take, so we know that he now has 35 nickels in his pocket, okay? It's a lot of change in his pocket, it's pretty heavy. All right, I'm gonna leave the one next to it for you to do, and I'm gonna move on to the next part. So when you are given a specific point, okay, and a slope, you can still write this. So if you're given a specific point, remember that's the point on the graph, x and y, and a rate of change, rate of change is another way of saying slope, okay, use slope intercept, y equals mx plus b, okay, so let's look and see. <clears throat> Martin has been charging $15 per lawn to mow lawns over the summer to save money. After mowing 23 lawns, he has $435. Write and solve an equation to find how many lawns he'll mow to make $750. Okay, so our point, our X and Y point is going to be here. At 23 lawns, he, makes, he has $435. And our rate of change, or our slope, is going to be here. It's because it's that per that per or each. So here's our slope, okay, and here's our point, excuse me, because at 23 lawns, he has $435. So that's like the point on the graph, okay? And then obviously, what we wanna know is, he has a total of 750, and we want to know how many lawns he's gonna have to cut to get that far. Okay, so obviously now we need to write this in y equals mx plus b form and solve it. Okay, so we can, we'll label everything y is equal to, um, the money. So now we have a point and a slope, but we don't know the y-intercept. So now we need to find that first, correct? Okay, so we find that first, so let's substitute. And I'm gonna get a different piece of paper because we'll need a little bit of room here. So we're gonna have to substitute here. So y, which is 435, is equal to $15 times 23 plus B, okay, $15, okay, this is going to tell us how much he started with, okay, so 435 is equal to, simplify that, you get 345 plus B, subtract 345, You're left with 90. So we know that he started with $90 in his savings account. Okay?
because at $15 a lawn, 23 lawns didn't equal 435. So we know that our B is 90. Okay? So now we can write our equation y is equal to 15x plus 90. And we want to have a, sub, a value for y now. Y is 750. So we can rewrite that. 750 is equal to 15x plus 90. That's the one we need to solve. So let's come over here onto the paper and solve it. 750 is equal to 15x plus 90. And the reason that that's our equation, let's remember, is we're being asked how many lawns the x's, see 23, same thing the x's, he will need to make this much money. So how do we find that? Well, how much does he charge per lawn? $15. How many lawns does he need? And how much did he start with in his savings account? So that's your y-intercept. Okay? Simplify this. Obviously, subtract 90. You're left with 640. I'm sorry, 660. Okay, divide by 15. And you're left, you get x is equal to 44. So we know that he will need to cut 44 yards in order to um, save $750. So here, 44 lawns. And that answers the question that we were going for. Okay. And the last example that I want to go through. Okay. When you are given two specific points, an X, we'll say X1 and Y1 and X2 and Y2, you can use the slope formula we just covered y2, y1, x2, x1, and then the y equals mx plus b formula, the slope-intercept formula. Okay? So let's look at the example, and we'll work from there. Okay? An antique vase was worth $185. When you inherit it from your grandmother in 2007. In 2017, the vase is worth $325. Write and solve an equation to find out how much the vase should be worth in 2025. Okay, so the first thing we need to know is what are our two points? So our first point, I'm going to use red, is going to be here in 185 in 2007. And I'll use blue for our second part. In 2017, okay, so let's use our values. Let's label these as X's are going to be dollars and Y's are going to be years, okay? That way we don't mess things up. And we want to know what's it going to be worth in 2025, okay? So, First thing we're going to do is find the slope. So our points are 185 and 2007, that's one point, and 325 and 2017. Okay, let's use our slope formula. Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. So we'll label this 1 and this 2. So Y2, 2017 minus 2007 over 325 minus 185. So I'm left with 10 over 140. Okay, for ease of us, we're going to go ahead and flip these. Okay, 
So we're going to flip this. So I'm rewriting this. I will rewrite these equations, and we're going to change this here. We're going to change this because it's easier. So let's make x years and y dollars. And I apologize. So again, our things will be 2007 and 185 and 2017 and 325. Okay, again, 1 and 2. Now we can use our formula. 325 minus 185 over 2017 minus 2007. So I get 140 over 10 or 14. Okay, so I want to talk real quick about what does 14 mean. 14 means it goes up in value about $14 a year. So we can say this goes up in value about $14 a year. Okay, so now we know the slope. Now we still have a point we can solve for the y-intercept. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, so start with y equals mx plus b. So what is our slope? Our slope is 14. What's our y value? 185. What's our x value? 2007 plus b. Okay, so we multiply this out. We get 28098 plus b equals 185. Okay, so then we subtract this 28098. 28098. We get b is equal to negative 27,913, okay? So that's our y-intercept, that's our starting point. I know this is a lot, so let's rewrite our equation now. y is equal to 14x minus 27,913. Now we wanna know what's it gonna be worth in 2025. So that's our x, so y is equal to 14 times 2025 minus 27,913. Okay, and I will fire this up real quick. 14 times 2025 gives me this. 28, 350 minus 27,913 means that it will be worth $437 in 2025. I know that was a lot. Uh, we will be covering a lot more of these word problems here in the next couple weeks, so please don't get stressed out. But also, too, please complete the last three that go along with this. So uh, in the morning, if you have questions, we can answer them. Have a great evening.